Hi there, it's Blackbright and I'm broadcasting from the UK. Um, for those of you who know me, um, welcome. I've got another mosquito bite on my arm, honestly. Um, they're everywhere. But anyway, you don't really see it up here, so you could feel as though I'm exaggerating, but I'm absolutely not. Without being too um, indiscreet, I can't really show you where they are. But anyway, um, yeah, welcome to my subscribers. Hi. I've been away, I've been out of touch for a while. So I just thought it was very, very relevant just to, for anybody visiting Jamaica um, for the first time, what to expect and um, how much the media plays into its rep how it represents Jamaica. Now, the last time I went to Jamaica is about six years ago, to be honest, it was about six years ago. Nothing much has changed. For me, at least, nothing much has changed apart from it being more expensive. But as normal, you know, regardless of all this thing that you hear about um, people being killed in the state of emergency and, you know, they make Jamaica sound such like a terrifying country or terrifying island. But in all honesty, you know, I was a bit apprehensive before I went because I thought, oh, my God, I'm going through the hurricane season. Um, you know, I'd heard about them killing goodness knows how many people and you have to be so wary and you've got soldiers with guns on the road. But honestly, um, we didn't um, improvise at all. We just went where we needed to go. And we saw the um, security, uh, what do you call them? The state of emergency, all those soldiers with the guns. They were like young boys. And yes, they did look kind of menacing the first time, but they look at you. I'm not quite sure what they're looking for because they don't search the car, you know, from you put the window down at the back because the car that we'd rented, the windows were blacked out. So the first time um, they stopped us, they asked us to open up the back window. But I'm not quite sure what they're looking for. Um, because to be honest, if they're looking for guns, they don't search the car, they don't stop you, they just wave you through depending on what you look like. So I'm really not quite sure what that is about. But anyway, as usual, I don't feel frightened when I'm in Jamaica. I got up, um, I got to a point where I thought, you know, I'm fed up of being driven around in a car. I need to get some exercise. So I went out by myself walking a long, lonely road by myself. And um, I saw some guys, you know, they were picking gin up off the tree and I saw other guys. And, you know, of course, I use my spirit of discernment, but it wasn't like... It wasn't scary. I wouldn't say that anybody coming to Jamaica should be scared, tourists or not tourists. They reckon the tourists are protected and they probably are. But I didn't feel frightened and I didn't live like a tourist. I went to the main, um, you know, I think what I noticed more with Jamaicans this time is that they didn't come on to me as a woman so much. Maybe because I've got older, maybe I'm less attractive. I don't know. But they didn't come on to me in the same way as they did um, six years ago. It's almost like they know um, they know who to target if they were going to target or they know that it's a waste of time or it's almost like they know who they are looking for if they did want to um, approach a woman or whatever it is. But I didn't get that feeling at all. I got the feeling that everybody was totally respectful. You you, you know, you hear everybody on the um, when you hear people talking about Jamaica, you hear them with the BC and the RC and the this and the that. I didn't hear anything like that apart from a very very few people um there were some guys in a car wash and you know some young guys and yeah they 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 use the rc and the bc and all that kind of stuff but generally speaking when you talk to anybody they talk in a manner that is respectful that is quiet they weren't loud 
And, you know, the perception that people have of Jamaica is totally wrong. Now, I had the, I, I had, I was quite ignorant. You know, when I, you know, my, the, my gold um, cap came off and I was thinking, oh my God, I've got to go to a dentist. Are they going to be sophisticated enough? Are they going to have the right equipment? Are they just going to drill my, my tooth and they're not going to give me no injection? <laughs> I had all these um, images in my head of what it was going to be like to go to a dentist in Jamaica. Anyway, I had to go because I was so worried that, you know, I'd get toothache. So I opened up the yellow pages. There were well, not yellow pages. I checked Google. Oh, I hate that noise. Hold on one sec. Let me just close my mail down because that's what that is. Yeah. Um, so I checked the Google um, for dentists in uh, Montego Bay. And there was one that was open 24 hours. There was one that um, closed at one o'clock and it was about 11 o'clock at the time. And there was another one that closed at five. And this was on a Saturday. So um, I called the one for 24 hours because I thought at least I'll get an appointment. Anyway, I called the one for 24 hours. They're saying, oh, no, we ain't got no dentists in today. We can't fit you with, with an appointment tried the other one the one that closes at five they couldn't fit me in with an appointment so I said what chance have I got for the one that closes at 11 for him to see me or him or her to see me anyway I called them and I said look I'm in a predicament my cap has come off I know you close at one which is two hours away is it possible for you to um just refit the the gold the gold um a gold cap Anyway, they said, um, yeah, come in. If you get here before 12, we'll try and fit you in. But we don't know how long you'll have to wait. So I thought, well, something is better than nothing. So off I went. I had visions of them charging me an arm and a leg because let me turn this phone off, wherever it is. I don't even know where it is. I had the visions of them um, charging me an arm and a leg. Because, you know, I always kind of think that people are out to exploit, you know, if you're foreign, kind of get the feeling that people are out to exploit you but you know I didn't get that feeling at all I went to this place it was quite difficult to find a hell of a long walk but they had the prices all written up in Jamaican dollars so I didn't feel as though I was being exploited it was quite full I waited for about maybe about 45 minutes and when I was taking into a dentist, the most calm looking man I've ever seen, he was so calm and so quiet and so gentle. And I thought to myself, bloody hell, I didn't have no nervousness at all. And I thought he was going to have to be drilling and doing all that, you know, like the dentist over here. He didn't drill. He said the, um, the tooth underneath was strong all sides so he said that was a good sign and he said he'll just um, put the glue it and cement it back and I thought thank god for that I didn't know how much it was going to cost you know I'd called my insurance company they allowed me $500 500 pounds worth of treatment on my and that reminds me I've got to get the receipt um on on the dental treatment and I thought wow Anyway, he was so gentle. Then he said to me, you know, um, I've put the cement in there. It's going to last up to 17 years. You don't have to worry about it between 17 and 20 years. And he said, you know, there's some white where the cement has overlaid. And um, that's going to have to be scraped off and it's going to have to be plugged up so that the saliva doesn't get back in and wear off the gold. Anyway, I thought to myself, oh, my God, after that, I thought, I don't really want to have that part done in the UK. I want to go back to him because I trusted him and I had confidence in him. And, you know, for me to have conf confidence in a dentist, you must know he was on Barnet Street. His name's Dr. Gardner. If you're looking for a dentist in Montego Bay, I would highly recommend him. I think it's 54 Barnet Street. It's opposite the Texaco petrol station absolutely brilliant anyway i don't even know how i got onto to that but it was just a part of the experience and the perceptions that we have of what jamaica is like what jamaica people are like 
you know, and, you know, I think when you disrespect them or you try to take advantage of them or you try to make out like you're better than them or you make out like they're stupid, then you're going to um, get a problem. They will not. It's almost like a switch turns on. It's they, like they pick up patronizing behavior. They pick up sarcasm. They pick up cynicism, anything like that. It's like a it's like a light bulb and it's like a flash and they can switch on you in a minute. So but apart from that, if you're minding your own business and going your own way, you've got nothing to worry about. Um, what else did I want to let you know about? Oh, yeah, the debit card. It's really a good idea to get the international Starling. Well, you can get any one of them. I use Starling. It's an international debit card. You put money on it and then when you go abroad, you can actually withdraw it. And it means you don't have to pay any withdrawal fee. The withdrawal fee is 525 Jamaican dollars, which is about five, is about five US. It's quite expensive. But if you've got that card, you don't have to worry about that. Um, places to eat. Um, there's plenty of places to eat. You can either go to the restaurants um, and pay between 2,000 Jamaican dollars, which is like I said, for two people, it's not bad. Between, but that's without drinks. So you pay about 2,000 to 3,000. I think a group of us went out, it came up to 120 pounds. That was in Ocho Rios. So depending on, but you can, it depends on your budget. There's something for everyone. If you if you um, are not afraid to go it, into the town where the locals are, you can get cheap meals between 300 um, Jamaican dollars, which is about $3. And um, it's about £2.50 actually, if you're thinking about sterling. Uh, or, you know, it ranges up to 600 you know, that's for local food. And then, you know, you, when you ask for a fish, you make, you get your yam, you get your green banana, you get your pumpkin, you get your breadfruit, you get your dumpling, you get, you get all of that with it. Okra, if you like okra. And we started going to this place right near the airport strip, you know, where the, the airport, the airplanes land and they, you know, they land and they come in. There's this um, place called Dragon Lounge. And they call it the White House um, City. And if you go around there, there's a little, well, there's actually two restaurants. This one is the blue and yellow one. But you go there and you get authentic food. You get um, soup that you don't really have to pay for because it's considered like uh, something to just get rid of the wind, if you have any wind. And yeah, and you can get that. And that's about, about 2000 if you get two box drinks, if you don't want anything too expensive. White rum. We were drinking white rum on the not even on the rocks i had mine straight you can get that between 150 jamaican and um 500 jamaican in the hotels it's going to cost you about 500 jamaican if you get it on the street on the side by the beaches it's going to be about 150 to 250 jamaican so it really depends on where you go and what you do um what else is useful for you to know if you've never been where to eat debit card car rental well the thing is right we um we wanted to rent a car so we thought we'd go to europe car or avis or one of them so we went there and they were charging like um 45 us dollars a day to drive the car plus 45 us dollars a day for insurance so if you're thinking about um you've got the car for 10 for 10 days it's like nearly it was like nearly two grand well two jamaican two two thousand us be about 1500 uk pounds for 10 days so i thought no 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 anyway we thought we'd go and um, think about that anyway the next day um walking down bottom road and um saw a place I, I caught sight of a place up on a hill that said car rental so we thought yeah let's walk up there anyway when we went there it was it was closed it wasn't open yet but this guy drives up and he says um can i help you and we're like looked decent enough he was driving a proper car i said well we're just looking for a rental he said well me deal with rental okay i you know 
So, next thing you know, we've got a rental car for £500 for the whole duration, including insurance. So, um, probably could have got it a little bit cheaper, um, but, you know, we just couldn't be bothered with the faffing around. And it was there, he was driving us to the car, he showed us the car, it was a nice Toyota and that kind of stuff. So, car rental, depend on who you know and then you can um get it so um yeah so what else was there i think those are the main things i mean we really drove around i'm my, my fellow's a uh, jamaican so he finds it pretty easy to drive up to you know certain distances but we went to westmoreland we went to farmers we passed trelawney we went to um green green something rather i think it's green way or something like that, I can't remember where that was. Um, we went to Ocho Rios, we passed Negril, um, went to Westmoreland. Yeah, so we did quite a few little trips. Um, there was another place we went to, but I can't think where that was. Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted to go to Portland for the jerk pork. But what happened is when we was coming from Westmoreland, we were driving down and I saw this pork place and I just said, hey, let's try and get some pork from there. So we climbed up and went up the hill and massive operation that they have. They did um, pork and chicken and just got, you know, a pound of pork and uh, some chicken and had it with some breadfruit and a couple of box juice and you're gone clear. Yeah, it rained a lot. Well, not a lot. There was enough rain and enough sun. It was almost like the, the island is blessed. Just enough heat and just enough rain to let the, the plants and the palm trees and all the, all the greenery look beautiful and are constantly replenished. Honestly, the country is so beautiful. I mean, I took so many photographs i mean it's it's impossible to share all those moments but you know i took them because i'm going to write uh, part two of the other side of tourism um, i wrote part one i think in 2010 the other part of tourism where i went to jamaica and i think i it was quite it wasn't a some people said it was positive some people said it was negative some people said it was funny but um yeah i'm now much older much more mature um i can look at it from a different perspective and i'm going to do part two i still intend to inject the humor into it but yeah that is where the details will be all those little things that you cannot say in a video and i think you know when you're thinking about educating people or informing people or sharing information there are so many different ways to um, tell a story and when you're doing videos like this, it can only, um, I'm, you know, I explain so much better when I write, you know, I'm really good at writing, even if I say so myself, so I can actually build a picture and go into some detail. Sometimes it's too much detail, but I can do that so I can create an image. So I intend to write a book about that experience and it'll be, um, the other side of tourism part two. And it might have something else in it. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that little experience with you. And um, so I don't so you don't feel as though you're left out of what I endured or ex experienced or enjoyed. And um, if you are interested um, in in the whole story, which includes a hell of a lot of stuff um, from arguments to um losing my temper to um you know going up into the hills oh yeah went up into the hills you know miles and miles and miles up into the hills all i could think about is supposing somebody jump out but you know what when you go up into those hills you just think as the i always think as people who live up in the hills it's like some kind of jungle but it's like a whole town up there. They have a church, they have um, shops, they have post office. It's like their own little world up in those hills. I'll tell you something. 
you have to go and see it for yourself. I can understand why so many countries want a piece of the Jamaican pie. Chinese already taking over the infrastructure. You've got the Bermudans and the Americans and the UK are taking over the hotels. The hotels are beautiful. You've got the Mexicans taking over the airport. You've got the Indians and the Asians and the Orientals, all you know, with all you know, all the storefronts. So it's almost like um, somebody has seen Jamaica and they realised its value and just decide to make it. Uh, it might be westernised to a large degree, but it's almost like they've seen this beautiful place and decided to make it more western and aesthetically beautiful for the western eye i should say i can't think of another way to explain it without the hotels it's still beautiful but the only thing is is that you see um when you see poverty you know men and women crippled or whatever lying on the streets that's where it's quite traumatic it's it's not a nice view and what they do is rather than help them they hide them rather than help the the local people they hide them they don't want them to be a, they don't want them to be seen by the co to me it's very colonialized i mean you it's almost like you've got all these rich white people who have bought jamaica and show the beauty of it i mean there's they've got a golf course they've got i mean the rose hall is seventy five thousand acres of land and it was two indigenous jamaicans that built that and what happened is they couldn't maintain it and they would and they were in debt when they died and it was just taken over so if you see it it's absolutely beautiful but I don't want this to go on and on and on. But there was so much. You can imagine 11 days and me taking in everything for 11 days. It, it would This video would go on forever. So I'm going to stop right here. And I hope that this is just an insight to um, what I was doing for 11 days in Jamaica. And please look out for the book. I will um, notify you when it's finished and when it's due to be released. Bye bye.